Okay, we're back. This is Dave Vellante. We're live, VMworld 2011. I'm here with Milan Shetty, who is the CTO of HP Storage and, uh, and a, a, a cloud advisor, former cloud advisor. So, uh, welcome. Thank you. So Thanks for having me. So this is the uh, spotlight um, that we've called Beyond Storage Virtualization. And Milan, we were just talking to um, uh, 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 Savas. Uh, um, you probably heard some of the conversation uh, about some of the cloud service provider requirements. Uh, we talked at the top of the segment about storage virtualization and how it really changed the mindset around utilization. So I want to have a discussion with you about that, but I want to start with, um, actually let's start with your role. So you're coming from a position of cloud advisor into uh, CTO of HP Storage. Talk about cloud advisor and talk about your priorities as CTO. Absolutely, so um, I actually came to HP a couple of years ago um, via the acquisition of um, Ibrix. Um, Ibrix, um, I was the CEO of Ibrix uh, back then. So, um, uh, I've been dealing with the cloud environment for a while and um, the core mission of um, HP Storage, as we see, is um, helping and leading um, from a vendor standpoint to assist customers from making the transition from enterprise to cloud. And that is in, in one sentence, if we want to call it out the core mission, that's our core mission. So if you look at the um, acquisitions HP Storage has made in the, in the past, uh, in the recent past, as well as where the products are going and what we have announced um, this week and last week between, uh, you re referred to Savas, it's all been around um, uh, helping, the, helping through the transition. Uh, as you seen the, from the three part standpoint, um, we had the, um, uh, the pioneer of the thin provisioning storage, multi-tenancy, all of the components which are now considered core and bread and butter to uh, having um, the enterprise go to the cloud, uh, into, including the uh, notion which we have now introduced around the federation and uh, peer motion with CMAC, I know talked about uh, just a um, just few minutes ago. What we are trying to do is, uh, how do we extend that, not only with 3PAR, we also have the left-hand products, which, are, uh, which is a product which sits right below the 3PAR uh, in our product portfolio, also have the peer motion. Uh, sort of a knowledge to make make the federation as well as the data mobility features available. So it's really the mission of how do we take the enterprises to cloud and make that transition easier is what we're core uh, pri and fi primarily focused on. Yeah, so um, you've got a much more diverse portfolio than when you were at Ibrix. And, yeah. Uh, obviously that's that's a challenge. We heard from CMAC that you know peer motion is peer to peer. It's not put. You're not. Your strategy seems to be not to put in a virtualization layer. You seem to be actually very much averse to that. Is that is that true, or am I reading too much into that? Uh, yeah, not quite. If we take a step back, not not quite true. So what we're doing is that if, I would call that peer to uh, peer motion is just an introduction. Federation is just an introduction in where we think we are going to go uh, further in our uh, product portfolio. Where we see is. Um, um, so if you look at HP as a company, so we got the servers, we got the storage, we do a lot of data mobility, federation, peer, uh, peer motion uh, components now within uh, a, a three-part array or between three-part arrays. Where we expect these things to go is active and very clever cache collaboration between um, elements which exist in the storage, but also something like SSDs which exist in the server. So you can you can expect us. So so in a way, I hesitated to ask in just pure virtualization because it's it goes beyond storage virtualization. It is how do we make use of all of the data mobility uh, components and the features we have in the three parts and left hands and make it expand over to storage which exists in the server domain. So if you think about the world where there are blades and there are lots of uh, SSD drives in them and then they are attached to 3PAR or um, left hand, is that SSD and the storage which also exists in the server now becoming eventually the part of the federations and the peer-to-peers is uh, we believe something which is going to be extremely critical in where the market is going. So it's way beyond storage virtualization. It's actually, um, sto uh, it's actually uh, cache uh, virtualization or call it so, so solid state disk virtualization to take advantage of uh, the data and the application co-location. Co because all this, how do we get this cache and how do we get the data and how do we get these um, data mobility features closer to the app, even beyond the storage 
right into the app layer itself. And that's what we're going to be. Interesting, so um, talk about your vision for cloud and cloud storage. So how does all this fit in, you know, draw on your cloud advisor you know, background and paint a picture for us as to what, what, what storage looks like in the future? Sure, so um, if we look at, we, we probably have to take a look at, uh, look back at the requirements, um, right? So uh, virtualization was a very disruptive technology which made uh, applications very mobile, right? They, uh, it's uh, broke the boundary between the physical and the virtual. Uh, the networking infrastructure now exists today uh, that um, people can host their data uh, in the network and uh, not have to worry about, in a lot of cases, latency and everything because there are technologies available even to speed up the things in the networking. From a cloud standpoint, I think um, if there is one area of virtualization where virtualization had been traditionally weak, it was actually in the storage area, right? People were still dealing with the physicals. Um, and uh, not much data mobility. So the first installment of um, uh, making enterprise applications cloud aware is uh, really a picture of a whole bunch of storage devices um, where, from the federations and the peer-to-peer -peer motion which we introduced in 3PAR and um, multi-tenancy and thin provisioning. Those components are very integral to making sure that um, your data is available to your application and to vMotion as vMotion or the, or the virtualization as it's moving, the data is also available and data is also moving with it. So I think we have, we have, we have provided that level of um, mobility now in the, into the frame, into the storage infrastructure. The next step really is, is how do you extend that back to, to my original point around into the, into the app layer itself and also the cache which is available to the app. So the, the way the world would be then um, down the line is whether, um, whether as the app is moving, the data does not have to move, uh, only the hard data has to be accessible into the local cache or the local solid state devices of the blades or the servers where the app is sitting on. So I think if we, once we do that, we are really breaking the boundaries of network latency also and making sure that the hard data is available closer to the application itself. So talk about what this means for organizations. Obviously it's, it's much, much more simplified right. to manage. Are we talking about other business value in terms of application performance as well? Absolutely, App application, I think the, from a business value standpoint, the first impact which our customers are going to see is that applications are going to be running much and much, much and much faster. I mean, we're talking about latency which could be in the milliseconds or even microseconds. So all the enterprise applications which have struggled to get onto the cloud because they didn't quite um, handle the latency uh, which existed in the, um, in the traditional cloud environment, I would say, um, uh, are now going to be able to expedite faster uh, because, because the barrier of latency is gone. Hard data is available in the local premise. Not only in the local premise, it's actually available in your server complex. So you, you yeah, and, and, and the extending the data tiering capabilities, extending the federation capabilities from the storage to the server tier and the server and ser server caches is going to adopt all of these bunch of enterprise applications which didn't go to cloud always were hesitant to go to cloud, will also start going to cloud. If you look at about it, right, the, it, it, no, undoubtedly, it's going to come down to application performance getting faster is the single most barrier for all of the enterprise or almost all of the enterprises going to cloud, and we'll do that. If you look at the cloud applications, right, the first set of applications which are in the cloud are backup, archiving, or um, data which is uh, write once, read many kind of applications where the latency has never been a factor that world is going to change. I expect that down the line, once we achieve that goal uh, through our product lines, um, we can, you can actually very easily, I can envision seeing oracles uh, also in the cloud. Yeah, I mean, it's all the applications with crappy for performance today that are in the cloud. Exactly. And, and, and so if that's it, you know, the cloud is not going to live up to its hype, is it? That's correct. Yeah, uh, okay. That's correct. That's, that's, a, correct. that's a gr great vision, and I've not heard it articulated that way before. Um, the other, so, that, so you're sort of describing the archiving and backup as sort of cloud 1.0 applications. And correct. The, the new emerging applications, certainly uh, the traditional block based stuff, Oracle. Yep. Big data is another one. Absolutely. Uh, you're seeing now, you talk, you know, iBrix, that, that's big data. That's correct. Now you're talking about big, fast data. Right. Um, as sort of the next wave of these applications. Uh, absolutely, I mean, and, and you, could, you could think about, right, Oracle and the, uh, the traditional structured data aside, even in the unstructured data and the big data to your point, 
the business analytics which has to be run on subset of the metadata cannot be uh, in the cloud today because uh, it's low from a latency standpoint. Now, if that metadata can be in the server complex uh, and, and the storage pushes it up because its intelligence has got all the heuristics and it knows which data is hard and just pops it up into the cache layer or make sure it never leaves the cache layer, that is huge. That is absolutely huge. So, so based on what you're saying, customers should be thinking about metadata management. Correct. And, and maybe thinking about it, first of all, thinking about it, because a lot of customers don't think about metadata management, and the right. ones who do, maybe thinking about it in a, in a different way. What would you say to that? How, what would you advise them there? Right, I think um, the, um, the question generally comes around, um, I expect, I do see a lot of customers, they don't ask the question about, I want the metadata performance to be better, but they ask this question about, I have this solid state device, which, um, which uh, a lot of vendors are pitching, and there seems to be a trend around uh, SSDs everywhere. Um, what do I do with it? Should I be worried about it? Um, so I think the question has not, um, you know, sometimes it takes a while for these uh, questions to really sediment down. They, they've seen this media, fast media, which can be put in the servers or in the storage. How can they benefit from that? And I think from a community standpoint, community such as, uh, such as yours in Wikibon and, and, the, uh, and the blogging community, mm -hmm. we can educate the customers around, you know, one way you can really make use of your, uh, this new trend happening in the faster media. I, someone once said it, I, didn't, I, I can't take credit for this code, is the SSD is going to be the new disk and disk is going to be the new tape, yeah. right? So, uh, so what? Right? What does it do to customer? And I think I think if we drive down to the customer education and the market education as well as the um, community education in the storage industry around, you know, where you can really take advantage of this is to make your metadata access faster, metadata read faster, and which will hence result in your apps running ten times, fifteen times, twenty times faster. And these numbers are not just numbers when I'm making it up. I think I think with SSD and metadata, all all the stuff coming from the from SSDs rather than coming from spinning media. We're talking magnitudes of orders of revolutionary change. Yeah, one to two orders of magnitude. Yeah, and that, yeah. so this is—I like the vision you're laying it out. It's a much more than bigger, faster, better. You know, we're talking about a complete transformation of the the IT architecture, and which has organizational implications and, and orders of magnitude potentially more performance, and then that's going to drive tremendous business value. Uh, Milan Shetty, thanks very much for coming on the Cube and sharing your knowledge and your insights. Uh, we'd, we'd love to have you back anytime, and. Uh, and it was a real pleasure talking to you. Likewise here, Dave. Great to be here, and uh, look forward to talking to you again soon. Okay. This